Welcome to Curious Chimps Podcast. I'm your co-host, Nathaniel Pearl. And I'm Sam Sheva. And welcome. We here at Curious Chimps are law-abiding citizens. We do not endorse anything illegal. And anything we discuss is for entertainment and not information purposes. We are not experts, and nor do we claim to be. So please, consult the doctors, do your research, read the label, and for the love of all that is holy, be safe. All right, let's talk about drugs. Curious, curious, curious chips. You know how long it took me to figure out why we have seasons? Like I, I seasons? got yeah. Like I had to. I was like, just, I was like trying so hard to picture the solar system, and I was like, uh, like, like, like twenty minutes later, I'm like, okay, the <laughs> Earth's on a side thing. It's like twenty degrees. It's twenty three degrees, like crooked, and it's also spinning, like around the sun. So it's like the orbit plus the, and then like I, I was, I don't know why, like I couldn't juggle the, like the, all the variables. It's so simple. Yeah. Well, but, I mean. How old are you when you were trying to figure this out? Not that young. Like, oh, I was, yeah? <laughs> yeah, I was like maybe 10 years ago. I was like, I don't know. Like, I, don't know I was like maybe 15, 18. Like. That's so strange because it's not just the <laughs> earth spinning and then the source is spinning. The earth is spinning and then there's a wobble and there's another wobble. There's like the procession of the equinox. It's like yeah. so as the, it's spinning, it's wobbling too. The whole, well, it's fun to think the whole solar system is is hurtling through space. Yeah. So there's like a spiral happening. Have you ever seen that GIF? Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I got. I, I used to be into that guy, there, Nassim Haramin or whatever. But he doesn't really do anything anymore. He just has like, he just like talks about sacred geometry. He doesn't like connect it to anything anymore. Mm. I, I haven't kept up with him. I don't know what he's doing to be honest. Maybe he just has like a kind of like bot run Facebook page. So I think he's not doing anything. But I saw that GIF is amazing. But like, okay, yeah. so so the there's like a plane to the solar system. Most everything is on that plane. Except for maybe this fucking like Nibiru thing that everyone talks about, there, like Planet X or whatever. Yeah, and it's really cool if you get into the electric theory of the universe. Like, look that up. It's fascinating. They talk about how like most most suns have like binary are a binary system. So they have their two, two suns. The two suns, yeah. And they think that uh, Jupiter was the was the sun was the other sun. Whoa. Yeah, and it like died and turned into this like brown dwarf or whatever the fuck. And there's so many cool theories they talk about, like the orbit changed and it used to be closer to Earth, and that's what caused like the Grand Canyon and crazy things like that. Like we think it's it's like water erosion, but it could have just been like a massive lightning bolt, and they and they prove it like in a micro scale. Holy shit! It's fucking amazing. And they talk about like shapes that would be seen in the sky because of the like interference of the like that's causing the the kind. It's literally just like friction, like electrostatic, like from planets. So, but then you'd see these like shapes in, in like the in like the 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 what not interference i guess of like the electromagnetic uh, fields like interacting with each other and then they show those shapes and how it would change over time and then they show like ancient paintings and how they match whoa and it's like these people like there's like a wheel and there's like a dude and like you know it's like uh it's like uh looking at the stars and seeing a fucking scorpion or whatever like you're you're using your imagination you're making it more real to what you know already you know yeah. but they're literally seeing like fucking shapes in the sky jeez that we just don't see anymore because so much has changed well, also and, our light pollution that too but it's like even if you go like it's like imagine orbits of planets have have shifted yeah and it's like it's crazy but like to what you were talking about the you know yeah the earth is spinning it's on an axis the axis itself has a has a wobble so like a like it like a kind of cone shape that yeah. it does like it's hard to say in, into words just Google it. It's Just crazy, Google it, guys. Man. Procession of the equinox, and all of that affects, like the seasons and the shifts, the seasons that we've been experiencing now. I mean, obviously, there's. I don't want to get into the whole argument of like man-made climate change and all that because we're obviously fucking destroying shit. Yeah. But but there's some stuff that maybe people don't talk about. I just don't trust like. Well, common hard. news anymore it's hard to know what's what's right and what's wrong exactly because just, there's experts on both sides so that's like a mind fuck for me yeah and there's a lot of money thrown around also so you Where's just can't trust anybody you know, know they said fat was bad they said eggs were bad for you they said yeah. sugar was okay and now we're all now we all have fucking cancer and shit you know yeah. it's like it's well we, it's the craziest shit God, man that's the knock fucking, on wood that's the fucking hardest part is where do you get your sources from and where, what can you trust these days? Even if you go deep, like you're yeah. not doing the science. Yeah. You know, like you just have to you're, kind of. You're taking, your, there's a leap of trust that you're, you're putting in those experts. It's, all, it's not even that. It's like, forget about it. 
you know like you, you're are you going to go into that field are you going to be specialized in it are you going to do something about that mm -hmm. you, all you could do like like for, if i go keto i feel really good but i don't preach it anymore I, because a lot of people have problems on that diet yeah. and i'm just realizing more and more like you want to trust something trust your experience that's the fucking truth man and uh, even my client she's a doctor and i was talking to her she's like awesome yeah she's super fascinating i would love to get her on one day she's an anesthesiologist Oh, that's terrifying. Yeah, and she has some insane stories. Like I fun. can only imagine. Yeah, I have I have a few crazy stories now, and I just work at at the hospital. Like I just I yeah. just do paperwork. I'm just a clerk guy. Dude, I wanted to bring this up before I forget. She Please. was telling me that because um, I was talking to her about she has like an injury, and she's like, I really hope it's not this. And I'm like, don't believe that because if you do, it might actually happen. And she's like, you really believe like the power of belief can affect? I'm like, I don't know what I believe, but if it if even if there's a one percent chance, fucking well. Li it's fun to think she's a scientist, right? Yeah. Like, every study ever, like, accounts for the placebo effect. That's like, what I was Aubrey talking Marcus about. says that all the time. And right? it's legit. Like, yeah. the placebo has real statistics. Like, it, it does work. And if your drug doesn't beat the placebo, it's not getting passed. And what's fun, too, is I, I have this gift. Like, when I watch <laughs> movies or anything, like, I can build a bridge of logic. I, could, I can kind of make all these assumptions and, and be like, maybe it's that. You know, like, that's just one of, like, six fucking, like possibilities f to, to make this thing that sounds crazy connect to the things that you already believe in hmm. and i could just like if i if i had her here and i could say like you don't believe in the placebo effect you like the placebo and the nocebo effect are real things i can inject you with something like morphine tell you it's a saline solution and then you're in pain yeah. even though you're chemically dosed with a fucking opiate like we're just a a pharmacy like the human body is just a pharmacy and belief is a weird way of saying like your your state like through your conscious mind you know the unconscious affects the conscious and vice versa and there's all these feedback loops and all that shit and she understands all that stuff yeah. so if i just kind of know enough of her language to talk about it and then i make these kind of little fantasy connections then she she'll just start nodding her head and go yeah maybe but hear this out she she was telling me anecdotal stories there's no side well i think she was telling me there was actual study that those who believe in God and pray before big surgeries mm. almost always come out alive. Mm. Like there was like a legit statistic in the study she was talking about. And then she was telling me anecdotally that she was talking to one of the surgeons and he says he doesn't operate on people that, that, um, that say they're going to die before surgery. <laughs> and he tells them like, we got to work through this. And like he said, like, I think it was a crazy percentage of those who believe that they're going to survive, end up surviving. And the ones who don't, literally ended up dying again it's like very clear it tips the scale you yeah. know you're gonna you're you're in a surgery even a normal surgery can have some weird complication that's why i'm hesitating to get the my toes like fucking broken into a better shape it's you don't know what's gonna happen yeah i could i could probably even be awake for i don't even know if i need anesthetic they could probably just do like a local anesthetic or something just freeze the fucking area yeah. just go bro just <laughs> give me a fucking belt <laughs> to bite down on and just crack them but oh, yeah right. man uh, the, there's there, you're you're in a vulnerable place, you know, and and also you there's a mob mentality, you know. A scientist they think, well, you know, like a a, a doctor's scientist, whatever. You're trained so much. Confidence is not even a factor at some. point You're just like you. You're the shit. You're the shit. You know what you're doing. I'm sure they're really scared. Like the first time you cut into a person or something. Like I can't imagine the the stress and the fear they go through. But it's like their lives. Mm -hmm. You know, they they. I don't want to say they get used they to put it. put in the hours, man. Yeah, they it's just, just it's their it's, environment. There's so many steps of um, procedure that it doesn't involve emotion. It's follow mm -hmm. the fucking line. But I've realized as through meditation and a personal, I'm sure this applies. To, I'm, I'm pretty sure this applies to everybody. But there's so much going on underneath that we're just not even aware of, you know. And I wish I had like a good example. But, the, you know. That they're they're suppressing their emotions mm -hmm. it's not that it's not happening and that's why i brought it up like mob mentality if that person thinks they're going to die the doctor has a little more there's hesitation everywhere something yeah. some i don't know what exactly but you're you're in a really vulnerable experience right now and yeah. everything matters and you're trying to put everything in your favor and if you're coming in scared then there's a, that that's you're tipping the scales you're just yeah. tipping the scales in a time when the scales are really delicate so mm. it makes sense to me and she told me like one surgery, she said it was like really a big one, mm. like very low percentage she would come out alive. And she was, as she was administering the, still, this is why it's so fascinating. I really love to pick her head because she's saying like her moment as an anesthesiologist is like such a, 
heavy position because it could literally be the last communication between that person and this reality. Like if that person yeah. dies in surgery, the last person he spoke to was her as she's administering the, uh, yeah. the, uh, the last thing they saw was like a, some girl smiling and saying count back from 10 or whatever. Like, so, so she told me that she usually says intense, something man. very profound to them. And she said like, I'm doing my part. She told this guy, I'm doing my part the best I possibly can. And now it's up to you to do your part. And then he survives. It was like an insanely low percentage. And he's like, I thought about what you said. Like, thank you for that. That's beautiful. That's the yeah. way you say it too. It's like, yeah. it's like, it, it could sound like don't fuck up, you know, but it's like the way you say it is like, like you're in your hands. It's now. genuine. You have yeah. the, the control or the choice. Yeah. You feel like you don't. Because We're doing everything on our end. It's yeah, just, yeah. if you fight, meet our, meet our ma match us, you're going to be through this. Yeah. And, and, and I mean, there's a reason that there's specialists because apparently you could really fuck up and, and like kill the person that you could just never wake up. And I think there's even just kind of like a really low percentage of that happening. Like, you know, like just some fluke accident, hmm. just, just because of the anesthetic, you, you, something happened. I don't a, know how that works. There's so many calculations on their end. Like if they fuck anything up, it's, I wonder, it must be tailored to the person. It must be like really specific to their it's biology very, or something. Very I'd love to get into the, yeah, yeah. I would be real. Oh, maybe that, maybe it's just that. Maybe it's like exact. It's like their, their, the dosage is like to the fucking yes. micro uh, whatever, you know? If like, the heart, the blood pressure drops, the heart rate goes up, There's they have to get involved and give something else. But if they're, imagine if there's like an allergy or if it goes, if it contradicts with another medication. Yeah, yeah. It's really fucking... Or it depends on what the surgery is because it also affects a certain organ or something like that. Like it's, I can't imagine all the yeah. It's a the really heavy position when you break it down. It's like, holy fuck. You know, and she was telling me like, most like a lot of anesthesiologists like they go through crazy depressions drug addictions because it's it's a heavy position man you know? i I, don't, I honestly don't enjoy working at the hospital anymore and i'm not even like like just just being exposed to it like dude a couple of days ago uh, this you know this 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 family came this guy was passing away and you know i don't want to i don't want to give any detail or anything because yeah, it's, it's not my place but like <clears throat> the this girl like it's like these two girls, like these sisters, they're young. They looked like they were like 10 years old, like, you know, like really young and they're losing their father. And I, I didn't, I didn't realize that that was happening. I'm just like doing some paperwork. I'm walking around. I suddenly just hear like a blood curling scream that doesn't stop. Like someone's on fire or something. I don't, I'm like, what the fuck is happening? Like, like instant blood pressure rise. Just holy crap. The orderlies start running because they just assume something freaking horrible is going down. And it was just the girl screaming, like crying, like, mm. like she couldn't hold herself. She couldn't when hold she it together. Yeah. I mean, yeah. I don't even think she saw him yet. She was just heading towards the room oh, and then boy. just fucking started screaming. It's not even crying. It was like, like just, yeah. Like I really thought someone was on fire. Like mm. I can't explain it. And, and I just, it shakes like, you to I had core, nightmares man. that night. I shakes was like, your core. I couldn't, yeah. it's like this crazy I can't even, I can't empathize. It's like, it's above you, that kind of pain, man. I, exactly. Yeah. I mean, even in the moment, I don't know what I would be going through. Like I, it's just this next level of like pain and, and I mean, and the guy died, you wow. know, and I, I like, I'm just there like filling out papers cause, cause it's like time of death and all these things. And, and these, like these daughters don't have a, a dad anymore. Like it's, it's wow. a, it's just an intense place, man babies are sick they they're born like not breathing or something you know and a lot of a lot of births happen there too mm -hmm. there's just something really real about working in the hospital i don't want to rant about but it now you're but literally like, a piece of the solution though like you that's why i want to get out of there I, i'm not good at my job <laughs> i'm i the it's it's uh i'm like a slow learner man i gotta do something like 20 days in a row to start getting the hang of it i'm like a distracted kid you know and and then to go there and they just give you like some quick training and it's all on the job training it's all just kind of go 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 I and then a doctor is like yeah. i need fucking 500 cc's of blah 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 and i'm like dude you got to slow down like i don't know what you're saying yeah. i don't even know how to do that <laughs> you know like like and then he's but he needs it now and I'm like, dude, I'm not a nurse. I'm not an orderly. Like, yeah. you, you can't do this to me. Uh, to be honest, it's good experience, they never though, put the man. pressure on me, though. Yeah. They're really smart and cool about it. It's a yeah. great place to work. It's just me. It's Bro, really just me. Just thinking and what, what I'm hearing, it's like you're going to be super adaptable to any situation if you can get... Oh, yeah. Dude, that's what they said about India. They're like, you never traveled before and you're going to <laughs> India for your first time? Are you yeah. stupid? <laughs> and I was just like, okay. Like, anywhere else I go in the world now, I'm just going to feel like, I'll, okay. Yeah. I kind of got that Thailand's a little bit less uh, it's a little bit more uh, touristy 
there's a lot of touristy spots in India, but like, yeah. there's a lot. I guess I avoided them me, also. Yeah. The, me naturally too. I would just deliberately get lost in a in a fucking area, like just fucking. I would. Kn- I obviously have my GPS, so whenever I want to get out of there, but I would just go uh, with my motorbike, yeah. find some random fucking thing, park, and just walk. What I did with the first time I like landed near, like I finally got to the the city like near the ashram. I just what I would do is get out of the hotel and start doing like a like you know when a bird is hunting and they go in like a spiral and they go outward more mm-hmm. and more so I would do that and that's pretty and smart. like I yeah like I mapped my yeah. place out and I found like like some street food and like I I was like I was like iffy about it because you hear about like getting sick and all these things but like you know you get oh. deli belly and or whatever I got uh, so sick in Thailand it was beautiful <laughs> but everyone speaks English and even if they don't, they just like find the guy. They're like, eh, da, da, da. You know, they just, like they, they're like, you you speak English, you know. And he doesn't much, but he's like more than other people, I guess. You just can go anywhere and and you're fine. But I I I'd be relieved to do any other job at the hospital. Like I see what you're saying. I'm I'm stressed out about it now, but I I can't help but be like fortified by it in some way. I, cool. I don't I don't want to keep going at it because it's like, you know, you could punch an anvil all day and get calluses, but like if you never heal. You're just going to break your hand. Yeah. And I just feel like I need to chill out. And I keep comparing myself to other people. And and I just feel like a, a weakling in a way. And it's like, yeah, maybe. I've had an easy life. You mm. know, I don't want to blame my parents for that. They just gave me a lot of love and not a lot of responsibilities. Mm-hmm. You know, they're not they're not perfect. And I'm not perfect either. And uh, I'll just, I know that now. And I'm just trying to figure that out. But it's so, I, I just go there so fast, you know. Yeah. And, and maybe... It's it's funny. Maybe when I travel, I'll compare it. I'll always compare my experience to India, and I'll have an easy ass time because yeah. you're just well, you know you're, you don't know what's going on. You're catching a train. From you don't what I hear about you're, India, it's like <laughs> you're. It's just like a complete shift in cultural shock. Dude, you, the the that place is like five different countries <clears> wrapped <throat> together. Also, that's what's crazy. It's like you go from one place to another, and everything's different. That's so cool. And you man. don't know how you're gonna offend. You don't. But they're very. They're very like aware that you're just a dumb American or whatever. Uh, I, I'm cliche, sure that's what they know? categorize you right away. Yeah, like in a nice way, yeah. you know. The uh, they're just you know like I remember one time I was I was in Rishikesh and I jumped into the Ganges, uh, the, the Ganga, and I'm in. I have my flip flops on still because I wanted to I wanted to ride the current and pop out near where I where I was staying, <laughs> <laughs> like a fucking uh, like a bus or something. Yeah, and then I so I climb out and they see that I'm still wearing my shoes. And and they, I just da, 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 you know they just all start like uh, talking and I just I just like look around no one to shoes. see, <laughs> but yeah I didn't know what was going on yeah. and I see I was like some guy speaks English he goes he goes you, it's disrespect you, you wear shoes inside the river you can't do that and I'm just wow. like I had no idea you know yeah. like my whole body is being submerged I didn't think it'd be a problem to wear my flip flops you know but it's like Thailand man like this, there was like. I was doing a lot of reading on proper etiquette because I, I noticed like certain things I would do and then people would just like, oh, like give me like a scoff or like just like you're a disgusting human. I'm like, fuck. And then I'm reading. There's like 30 things like step one to 30 of etiquette you have to do. <laughs> and like there's basic ones is you take your shoes off before you go into a store or into mm. someone's house or to a temple or to whatever. Mm. That I caught on pretty quickly. But there's it started getting super complicated, like eye contact with certain people. Like don't look at the homeless or something like you. Yeah, never touch someone below you like the social status levels so oh, like, yeah it's really weird man it's like you can't that's, wave that's at certain weird, people man. That's and i'm like weird fuck thing. i can't memorize this whole fucking thing i'm gonna fuck it up oh it, but you don't know either like I, like everyone looks like just indian to me like i don't know what's going on yeah and in some places i look indian that's what's hilarious there's some like paler skinned people bigger nose smaller nose like just such a plethora it's such a mix you know there's another one it was like uh don't if your feet are crossed if your legs are crossed and your foot's pointing at someone it's like huge disrespect oh wow so i i was reading that as my foot was crossed and there's a woman <laughs> across me i'm like oh fuck just, sorry sorry because the, the sorry. feet for them is really like the lowest of the low of the body yeah and like the head is like your holy the, the head of the head is everything yeah sure, so sure. it's like you never there was one where like never tap a Thai person on the head i'm like oh, who would would <laughs> Who would tap a Thai person on the head? Just I pat, guess pat. like a, a head pat apparently is like the biggest disrespect. <laughs> That's funny. I don't know. I, I feel like I got lucky because I was I was in this place that was, I, I guess it was used to like having a few random like straggler tourists because it was near that ashram that I was going to, but they didn't care. They just like they're like, oh, a white guy, like uh, like come here. I'm gonna take you on some train tracks. 
you know, like you're, you're going to jump in my tuk-tuk. We're going to go to my cousin's store. We're going to go to my brother's <laughs> restaurant. Like they know what to do. Yeah. And they, and they try to screw you, you know, like, because people go and they're a little gullible and you, you, you read about that stuff first. Yeah. If you're smart, you know, Thailand, and, same problems too. for sure. You gotta, you just gotta, ha- you, honestly, you just gotta pretend you gotta learn how to haggle. You gotta learn how to also common sense though. I think a lot of these I didn't things see it as pe- that. really, I didn't, I mean, like once I read it and I understood and then, and then, and then even with experience, I realized like, you can just pretend you don't want the thing. You know, and then they pretend like, fine, I'll just get the next customer. And mm. you guys, you kind of like have this, I don't care off, you know, like this, this competition of like, look, uh, I have money in my hand, but like, hmm. you know, and they start to just start bringing it down and down and down. And dude, well, you will cut it by like 50, 70, 80% sometimes. They really try to fuck you over. Oh, yeah. I fuck, <clears throat> man. I'll never pay the face value of price, whatever. Anyone sometimes they you. just know though. They go, they start at a, like a, this is my price. Fuck you. Yeah. And then you're just like, come on, man. And it's like, if it's a touristy area, they're just like, dude, you, you can't bargain with me. I'll just mm. get the next guy. You know? Yeah. But, uh, but I, I, in terms of the traditions and stuff and the etiquette, I, I spent like a week outside of the ashram and then a month in the ashram. So then when I got out another few months in India, I just felt like I had it in me. I knew what I knew what to do. I knew like there was just this kind of like I felt I fit into a slot. I was like this foreigner who was there on the kind of like a spiritual journey, you know, air quotes and hmm. and I I I knew those steps and then I and then they were like, "Oh, he's that type of person." And and they just understood. Nice. You know, and then some people would pass and see I was wearing beads or something and they would say ram ram or something and i would say it back to them or hari om or something like it's just you just pick up these little greetings or oh. or something like that you know and and you next thing you know like no one no one cares you're just walking around like not like you're one of them you stick out like a sore thumb no matter how much you try but yeah but you're you've passed like the level of tourist like you're just like you're kind of living there it's kind of like you're getting the the basic level of how they function sort of yeah just i could i i, I didn't muck up the the gears so much you know but it's also funny because I feel like there's a lot of leeway because there's a deep spiritual, like, uh, just, just many ways to be spiritual in that country. And like this, like the feet thing, you know, I, I, there was a story that they were saying at the ashram about like, you know, you, you're this guy's sitting there and he's like, he has his feet pointed. He's a student, you know? So the teacher's like, Hey, uh, get your stuff pointing your feet at the altar. It's disrespectful, hmm. you know? And he, and he goes, <clears throat> why? And he goes because those are the dirtiest part of your body, and you're and you're you're showing them to God. And then he, he says, like a smart ass, you know, but like a, it was very wise of him. He goes, okay, show me where God is not, and I'll put my feet there. And it's, it's a like, good answer. Shut you the fuck up, didn't I? It's a very good answer. <laughs> and then, and they told they told us that story at the ashram. It's like, look, you're just like half of you are from other parts of the world, you know, like try to be respectful when you get out of here, but also understand what's going on. Don't just do it to do it. You know, mm. like the, there is no dirty part of your body. Don't, don't, uh, don't worry about it. <laughs> Fucking spot on answer. I want to meet that guy. <laughs> yeah. Well, I don't I don't know. It's just like a story. I don't I don't know who it was or whatever, but it's just Jeez. beautiful. Yeah. Man, Thailand is a, I can relate. Cause um, I went to a lot of temples and it was just, it was really beautiful to be in temples and see the, the altars and all that kind of stuff and how decorated each one was. Like yeah. I saw at least fucking in that trip, at least a hundred temples and it was crazy, man. It was just like really beautiful artwork and each, each temple had their own different style of artwork. It was, oh, that's cool. Yeah. And it's like, they're all telling the same story, but in their translation, you know, it's crazy to see these intricate, beautiful things. They're they're all painted. It looks yeah. like uh, you're in Disneyland sometimes because they're so intricate and so beautiful. And you're like, someone fucking made that. Yeah. Someone sat there and fucking made that shit. And maybe some things are restored and it's more of like a plaster or something. I don't know. And then you go in like some other part of the country and there's these these falling apart, like beautiful, ancient looking things. And they look the same, but like without that new coat of paint or something, you mm. know, and or they're even just abandoned and you can kind of go to those spots that you're not allowed to go to usually like where it's caged off and there's like the, the, the statue of like whatever deity they chose to yeah. worship and there. It's, you know, like um, that Oriental style with the, like the roofs kind of look like scales of a snake. It's yeah, kind of like yeah. indented. So I found out why it's like that. And I just thought it was their, their style of, of building structures, but it is the scales of the basilisk or the bas- basilisk. That's a tough word to say. I thought that's the first way you said it. Yeah. The snake that came to Buddha when he became enlightened and it was a protector. 
so someone was explaining to me that that's why the roofs are that it's literally the protector of the temple wow it's like a mind fuck i'm like holy shit i was always wondering why they all look so similar on like that structure it's like a wavy scaly roof you know i always enjoyed the animal animalistic like the 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 physiology of, of a lot of animals gets shown through the art and through the the worship and stuff there's there's dragons and fish and and tigers and all these cool things. I mean, you know, India, like India, Asia, technically, I guess, but like the, there's more of a focus on the human shape. You know, there's a respect to to a lot of different religions. So I think a lot of the uh, like what what's 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 common between all of them gets kind of preserved most of all, or or maybe just rises to the surface more easily or something. And that's like the human. Hmm. And there's and like a lot of the stories also are these like enlightened beings that are like in their kind of final human form or something like that or they or they choose to come back and be human again but they're still very godlike or something yeah, they still but have some animal future too so usually it's like a, in india like it's like half animal half human body well the, i don't, i can't there's thousands of things you know yeah. the only thing i can think of is like let's say like shiva or something like there's a lot of animals that are like a companion like every god kind of has this companion that they ride or something you know like or they or it's like they're it's almost like a like when witches have like a familiar or something like that. But there's also like a, a what is it? Krishna, yeah, and or no, Vishnu has the head of a Ganesh. Was it just elephant or was it a human body? I'm I'm mixing them all up now. Yeah. I don't know. I have to like whip Google out. Yeah. And Hanuman is just a monkey. <laughs> Hanuman's just a monkey god. He's wow. just like the, like there's crazy stories of him like like uh, lifting mountains and like jumping f- like over a continent and shit like that. And, Jeez. and uh, yeah, he's a cool, he's a cool story. A lot of people like him because he's, he's like the epitome of, uh, of like devotion, but like the half, the, the monk, the, the elephant head one, I wish I could remember the name. It's good. The elephant head one. I just remember the story. It's like, uh, I think it was like uh, Shiva and Parvati or something. I don't remember the names right now. Okay. I'm really, I'm really forgetting all of it. But uh, they had a kid. They like make a kid out of like they're like I want I want a kid, and they just like make a kid out of like clay or something, and and like breathe life into it. Some crazy story like that. Jeez. And then something happens and it dies, or like it get like its its head gets cut off or something, like by accident by the father I think too. Like he sneaks up on him and he goes ah and like chops his head off. And then and the wife is like, dude, you killed our son. You know, like I'm so sad now. So he tells, I don't remember who, like one of his servants or something, like go and get the head of the first animal you see and and he bumps into an elephant so he like chops the elephant's head off and like puts it on the kid it's such a crazy story <laughs> i want to see like an anime or something i want to see like a tv show i'm Whoa. sure it exists but like a good one you know like not just a soap opera like i want to see like cgi or like it's a cartoon or something but i want to see these all stories that. have like deep moral meanings behind them it's half and half in india yeah. there's like I mean, in, I had a limited experience, obviously, but it, I just feel like a lot of people take it seriously. A lot mm. of people are like, this is just something that happened long ago. And it kind of has this air of like an ancient civilization. Like when you talk about Graham Hancock, yeah. there's just like stuff that we've forgotten, you know, like limits and possibilities and and uh, mm. and realities that, that we just are pretending don't exist right now. And it's like you we don't realize what we're capable of yeah. because we're, who's going to sit down and and practice yoga for like 20 years just so they can like walk on water or something weird especially in this system that where it's a machine that we're feeding we gotta have to work into it it's not even practical if you're the <laughs> kind of person who's gonna do that kind of work you're gonna realize that you're 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 just like jerking your ego off yeah you know like that story rogan always says like like this guy practices the the power of of walking on water for 40 years and he t- and he goes to the buddha and says i've practiced the cd of of meditation i can walk on water I've practiced for 40 years and then the Buddha says you know the fairy's a nickel <laughs> and I like I love that story I, I, Rogan makes it a punchline too See, like a, he's just a comedian the fairy's a fucking nickel it's like it's like that's the premise is what's the point when there's we figured out ways to make it a little bit more accessible I think that I think the the like Gautama Buddha is also this very grounded enlightenment enlightenment figure you know like these other figures are like so much uh, so much more of god so much closer to god uh, or maybe they've even kind of been there and decided to come back 
so they can really manipulate matter or something in a way that we can't understand you know like some yeah. kind of crazy alien or magic thing or just like a simulation theory whatever you want to whatever bridge you want to build you know but but the buddha is like i'm just a dude and uh, whatever karma or whatever, like I'm enlightened in this lifetime, but also I'm, he's just kind of has this no nonsense way of talking. And he just, go, he just observes and goes, this is it. I'm a human. You're a human. You can do what I do. Hmm. Pl one plus one equals two. Nice. And everything else, whatever, you know, is this, there's this deep practicality and you might throw the baby out with the bathwater, you know, but yeah. who cares? <laughs> <laughs> you know, do you need to walk on water? Yeah. maybe we need to know that it's possible maybe we need to know these crazy things walk on water is just an example you know but like if 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 you saw something like that if you saw some really crazy shit like i heard some crazy stories at the ashram about people lifting like a guy who was able to make himself very light he was like a huge dude he was like seven feet tall and then he asks like one of his servants to one of his helpers or whatever like to lift him because he was injured and she's like i can't i can't lift you and he goes trust me and then it's like he was like like two pounds and she just like brought him to his bed and it's like how do you how do you explain those things it's just a story now but yeah. you know have you ever had any experience like that like anything kind of can't explain <sighs> i wish man i wish i can tell you i did but i i, I, I i've never had that kind of stuff you, you know what though you block them out because like i have to reach for them i have to think about it like i've seen some lights in the sky that mm. i couldn't explain and it was right after some friends of mine were like chanting deeply for like 20 minutes. And that's what I'm saying. Like there's this commitment. There's this level of like meditation, this level of, of presence and practice. It was, it was longer than 20 well, minutes actually. Well, look, I've had moments, nothing insane, like lifting someone who weighs fucking whatever. And he felt like two pounds, but I've had moments. What's his name then? Sheldrick? What was his thing? The Morphic Rupert Resonance? Rupert Sheldrick. Yeah. Morphic Resonance. This one, uh, this one is a mind fuck, man. And, Thinking about it was such a fucking weird thing. Uh, I was back in college, and um, I'm on the bus going to school. I have a class. I'm running late, and my teacher didn't like this teacher at all. And for some reason, I was on the bus. I was just thinking, I'm like, fuck. Like, I, I just I, she's gonna bring her uh, bring a dog. She never even spoke about a dog. I'm like, she's gonna bring a dog to class or something. I'm like, just thinking that. I'm like, what a stupid thought. It's you know? like you picked up on something. Yeah. I'm like, she's gonna bring a dog to class. Thirty minutes later, I get to class, and she's there with her fucking little dog. She's like, I got a dog in the class today, but, and I'm just looking. I, I thought I was in a fucking like wake up kind of thing, like an yeah. lucid dream. And I've had moments like that quite a few times that are just like coincidental, but also like statistically, like how the fuck did that happen? Where if you really calculate it mathematically, it's like one in a trillion. Yeah, I really want to explore like like. Uh I mean, I, I, one time I saw a video on, on YouTube and it was just like, it's like one of those things that are buried, you know, like YouTube, you know, if page one or page two past that, it's like, you don't know what the fuck you're going to find. But it was this I guy. I there was a page two. Oh, yeah. It's like, what? Page two? What are you talking about? <laughs> Fucking, I just go on Google. I don't even go on YouTube anymore. I just go through Google. Uh, what was I saying? Yeah. Uh, so it was about remote viewing. And a lot of people picture it kind of like astral projection. It's like you, you like conscious, like you, like something leaves your body and you have this presence, but it's not. It's this thing that ha that a lot, like a few, like world, a few militaries put a lot of money into. The U.S. Exploring. put a shit ton of back in. Well, I think he, it was he's the from 80s or the 90s U.S. Did? program, yeah, and yeah. he was talking about how it was actually very effective, and he talked about a lot of stuff that got weird because he's like we you know once you have this power and you kind of start playing with it and turning it in on itself turning it towards you turning it to you start getting weird answers and shit about like what we are and mm -hmm. he, he kind of like realized some crazy stuff through that and he like he wanted to teach people and just kind of tell the truth about it and stuff and i went through the method and it's incredible the accuracy i got i couldn't believe like really? like they it was just a it was just a youtube video you know, so like you can watch it over and over kind of thing. But it was the first time I'd ever watched it. And I and I I didn't know what was coming. And they said, like, you know, we're going to do a practice thing. And, uh, you know, I just want you to clear your mind and blah, blah, blah. And like, I, I won't go through the whole technique, but it's kind of like a stream of consciousness. You know, it's 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 this unconscious, like just pick stuff fast kind of thing. But they also had this piece of paper. He's like, you know, print this out and just like check these boxes off. So they make it really easy for you. It's very formulaic, very militarized, literally. Mm -hmm. And and then I remember like, you know, you like you draw a cross and it means like right angles, which means like not it's like something man made. It's not in nature. And then like I, I they said, pick a pick a color, pick two colors. And I wrote gold and red. And mm -hmm. I was like, 
there's no way gold is going to be a thing, you know? So then he goes, okay, like, like I have this envelope and I'm, and he pulls out pictures. I don't remember the second one. Cause it was, it was also dead on, but the first one was the golden gate bridge, which wow. is painted red and is called the golden gate bridge. Yeah. And it's a man-made structure. And I'm like, I don't know if this guy is just like a, a mentalist, but that's he, what I was saying. He might be, uh, yeah, subconsciously he's injecting, injecting the, yeah. yeah, maybe it's all a scam and he's just making money. I, I'm a very good skeptic, Yeah, but I, I, the way, the way he talked about it was just really convincing. So I don't know, like, I, I feel like I got like swayed a little. I got like but this uh, ties swindled. into what we were speaking about belief, like the power of belief and how it can actually affect yeah. the experience. So I didn't, I didn't keep exploring it, so yeah. I don't know, you know, it's but that's just one one. example, you know, like I, like I said, I saw those lights and I saw, uh, those lights were cool, man. Like every, every time I tell the story, they're like, sure. It wasn't just a plane or something. That's like, dude, come yeah. on, man. Like I have eyes. I know what a plane is, you know, like maybe it was a trick of the something, something, but other people saw it too. And it was nonsense. Like drones didn't exist the way they do back then. Yeah. And, and they looked like stars. They were far away. They were, and they were like two things kind of moving as one. Then they start spinning on each other. And then they kind of like stop and one flies away at a ridiculous speed. And then the other one follows later. Dude, I used And to I was be... like, that is not a thing. That's not like... <laughs> That's not human pop. Yeah. Humanly pop. I used to be obsessed with the UFOs years back until I got into psychedelics and realized that the aliens are interdimensional. <laughs> but <laughs> it's us in the future, bro. <laughs> <laughs> but I got to tell you, man. Um, What's that guy's name? Greer? Yeah, he's a piece of shit. Oh, yeah? Not yeah. too bad. I was so hyped for him when he was on JRE, and I stayed up till 2 a.m. because the the time difference to oh, watch yeah. that podcast live. And, like, I don't even... Like, I literally, I, it was like a high school day. Like, I had to go to school the next morning. It was 2 a.m. The podcast started. I finished at, like, 4. And when I got out of it, he's full of shit. And it was unfortunate. But That's too bad. There's guys like him that kind of ruined that community. But have you seen who Joe had on pretty recently? The... The, fu- uh, the Bob fighter Lazar. pilot, Bob Lazar, yes, but then just like last. Oh week, no, I didn't. No, no, I didn't. Um, this is going to back really to back, huh? Two yeah. of them. What's Let's going go into on? Bob Lazar quick because um, I did a paper about Bob Lazar in like grade nine. Really? Yeah, I have it in my email. I found it. Look it's hilarious. I'll send it to you, please. And it was a public speaking thing. Like I went in front of the class and oh, laid out my. Bob Lazar. So you've been weird forever, forever, man. I was a truth seeker for a long time. Good times. And I'm just talking shit, saying he worked for S4. Like I have all the details that he was emphasizing on the uh, on the JRE. Like no, I wasn't Air 51. I was at a sector a sector called S4. And I'm like, like I had this, I was reading this, I was impressed with my research. I'm like, fuck, you really, you went deep into this, you fucking 16 year old dates, you know? Yeah. And back then too, like internet is, internet's worse now, actually. You yeah. know, like you get, you get bottlenecked so quickly anyway. And like, yeah, it's definitely because there's so much bullshit there now. It's just covered in crap. Yeah. It's so all at least back then it wasn't as big. There wasn't that much volume. So like the information you're getting is either correct or incorrect, but there's no Do, like. You remember when on youtube you used to have like suggested videos that actually mattered and now it's just the same shit in your front page yeah it's just like no watch <laughs> these and i'm like what about something related to what i'm watching like i get frustrated I netflix suggested, also though huh i still get the suggested i don't know i i see i see, it says suggested videos but it's yeah. just like it's like one or two videos of like the same i think there's just too much channel content, yeah or something i don't know you know, I just, or maybe I'm just subscribed to too much shit. I don't understand how it works. Maybe I could use it better. Also, yeah. maybe it's me. Or maybe you just go down the YouTube wormhole too many times, and then just the algorithms think you like all that shit. Yeah, but I don't know. I don't know, man. It's just frustrating. Like yeah. I, I feel the same way with Netflix. I go, I'm, I'm, I'm like, I could, I could go in and I could type in something completely random in the search bar, and it's like, yeah, a couple of stuff in the first two like uh, rows, and then it's just all the shit on my front page anyway. Right. And I'm like, what's going on? <laughs> that doesn't even have that word in there. Like, what's yeah. going? What are you doing to me? <laughs> anyway, I'm gonna. I didn't want to rant about it. Please continue. So, aliens. Man, I'm standing in front of the class, t- speaking aliens. my mind, <laughs> speaking my mind about aliens, about Bob Lazar. And there's some shit in there that I maybe shouldn't have put, but at the time I thought were true. It was like this dentist did an operation on like six people that claimed to be abducted and found a fucking chip in each one's jaw. Yeah, like obviously so that many was, stories. Yeah, like that. so that was in there. I'm like, okay, that one was a little bit too crazy, but I'm 16. But the fact that I had Bob Lazar on, I was a fan of him from that day. And then seeing him on the podcast, like kind of not forgetting about him, but like moving on in life, you know, I'm not a, I don't really care about the UFO phenomenon as much. But 
it see, must have struck a chord like this nostalgia sort yeah, of like, it, oh, it all yeah. flooded back and I'm yeah, like yeah. fuck he's saying the same fucking story from when I researched it nothing's changed this guy's no, made no profit of you barely heard of him till now that's I, it if there's fuckery like the, they're they're good at pointing out like the like this guy's a genius if there's fuckery because he, the, like Rogan said it like there's the guy's reluctant to tell the story he's not profiting on it much I mean I'm sure there's some publicity and some maybe book or somebody's getting a lot more hate than yeah. anything or maybe just weird wackos also like come up to him kind of thing he was talking about yeah. and he like he gets fucking fed up about it but also the story is very consistent over a, the time a long spent. period of time yeah, yeah and it's over just, 20 years but and and i mean look i'm i'm a little bit of a study of of human behavior i'm not an expert by any means but you hear the guy the way he talks he's not pulling it out of his ass i mean it's either very rehearsed and he's a genius actor because it's very subtle or he's just remembering he's just yeah. telling you he's like oh yeah this happened to me like yeah. i remember this it's also a story he's said like 20 fucking million times, you know, so. But who knows? usually you can follow the money and it's like if this guy became like a superstar fucking in that community and made a shit ton, wrote a book, he didn't do any of that. He's kind of just fucking kept to his own for 20 years mm. and then came back to light because of the. Uh, but he's like an engineer or like a. Yeah, he's just doing like his own. I'm sure he's, he has like a better job he sells, than like uh, writing. He, he, I watched a documentary on him that was by uh, James Corbell or whatever his name is, something Corbell. I don't remember. Anyway, What's he's it called again? Bob Lazar, UFOs, and something. Like, it's a weird yeah. name. It's on Netflix, right? Yeah. And it's pretty much the guy operates his own little facility where he sells, uh, like, science equipment to other labs. Like, it's just, like, very vanilla lifestyle. He's not into all that shit. And then just so happens to get the spotlight on again because more people are coming out. But I have a theory that if he is lying, there's one reason why he's lying, and it's probably... I don't believe he's lying, but uh, the military is scary, man. Yeah, but I mean, that's could a generalization be, there. But what I got out of it, there's two possibilities: he's telling the truth, or he's hiding some crazy affair he had at, at some time, and he came up with a whole story to explain to his <laughs> wife why he went out late for a few days and came oh back, and then she probably freaked out and said, "You have to go public with this." And then he, the to dick, get it, bro, it backfired. It's just the dick, you know. That's my only thing, my only skepticism. Like, fuck, he's either hiding an affair and it had to go this route. You know what I thought you were gonna say is that like like he's a bit of a pawn. It's just like look, we're gonna we're gonna secrete a little bit of truth out through you. There's all this other stuff. He he even says sometimes he's like, I can't tell you this, I can't tell you that. There's just whoop. I gotta stop playing with my headphones. It's fine. Now. It's fine. Don't yeah, touch. it's good. Don't touch. Can you? Yeah, I can hear myself. I don't need to hear myself anyway, but. Uh, yeah, like maybe maybe there's just a lot of calculation to it. Maybe even he's manipulated into being that position, but he thinks he's just like of his own volition, just doing his thing. Like, the, like it's easy to manipulate people. If you have like a room of forty people who know about this stuff and they're just sitting around and thinking about like how to, like you know, uh, socially engineer a situation, it's not that hard. And then you have a few contingencies because like maybe he'll go left, maybe he'll go right, kind of thing. Hmm. People people don't believe in that. But it's like what it's, that this whole thing was like a, a mind fuck on him. Well, like I, an experiment. I just mean him. in the general way of how manipulatable we yeah. are. Is that a word? Manipulatable. Anyway, manipulatable. 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 But I just <laughs> I I got into magic when I was young because I don't know I'm just a nerd and <laughs> that stuff's cool now actually. But anyway, so I got into mentalism uh, and I really like this guy. Uh, what was his name now? Oh, he's so famous in like uh, the UK. Darren Brown. Okay. Darren fucking Brown. Holy crap, man. I had not seen anybody like him. I've seen some ma magicians. I've seen a few mentalists, but this guy, he just merged the two so well. And he uses like sleight of hand and like, uh, like mechanisms hidden in the clothes and secret pockets and like all the, and stooges, like, like actors, like he'll do everything to fuck with somebody. He also has a really good kind of surface practical level of psychology and like mob mentality and all these things so that he can fuck with people and hypnotism and and all that kind of shit that he can um that he can like i mean it's it it's hard to explain i guess i kind of did an okay job before but it is this kind of accumulation of experiences that 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 like chips away at your your disbelief until you understand what's really going on and darren brown i love him also because he lets you in on the secret mm -hmm. A lot of his shows are very entertaining, and he's a really charismatic guy, and he's and he's got a British accent that helps. But he he really shows you what he does and how, 
and and he's like it doesn't work sometimes but i won't show you that time you know there's movie magic also there's tv magic going on as well mm -hmm. but he will fucking make you think a blue car is red you know like he will fu i've i've hypnotized people until they thought they were drunk i made a guy bite his shoe once because i told him it was a steak dude that's hilarious just stupid shit that you you don't think is possible it's, that just kinked a story in my mind man please long time ago me and my buddy we were, we were three it was me and my buddy scott and this guy blake um we had a fucking bag of tea <laughs> like <laughs> just a bag of crushed up tea it looked like weed I think it was like chamomile or something. Or oh, thank God. Or a green tea or something. Oh, no. Because <laughs> you can smoke chamomile. <laughs> and we, I know where this is going, right? I don't know what kind of tea. Anyway. It we, looked we, like weed. Yeah. <laughs> we rolled it up in a spliff. And me and Scar are like, okay, we're going to see if we can get Blake high. So we're all passing the J. We're like, oh, we just got some really good weed. It's some of the best weed that we've ever found. Blah, blah, blah. We were like 14, 15 at the time. And we're all passing it. Me and Scar are pretending to take hits. We're like blowing out instead of inhaling, you know? Smart. And just passing it, and we're like, yeah, yeah, oh, I'm so high. Man. I'm, I'm telling Scott, I'm so high. And Scott's like, yo, I'm so high. Yo, Blake, how you feel? He's like, whoa, I feel really high, man. And we went on and on, and like, he's like, holy shit, whoa, this is like weird. I never felt this kind of high. And like, it blew our minds how we convinced him that he was fucking weed. And then we broke it to him, and he starts, he was pissed, you know? He's like, what the fuck? Oh, but did he just click back into sobriety? Yeah, he was normal. He's like, dude, what the fuck, man? I don't know. How much is that placebo nocebo, though? Because like, you did still, he did still smoke something. You know, like you could still get a buzz. Like you could smoke a cigarette. If you're not used to it, you feel really wonky. That's true. But the, it went on for about 10, 15 minutes. Like it was, like I'm just That's dumbing it down. That's the trick though. That's when I, when I got the guy drunk, like Darren, I shot, I found that one from Darren Brown. It's like you, you walk the guy through what he feels when he drinks yeah. and then you do it like 60 times and then he stands up and he falls over because he <laughs> thinks he's drunk. His body just thinks he's drunk. It's crazy. That's crazy. I did it to myself. I mean, anyone listening, maybe you too, like you ever get a, you ever have a dream where you smoke weed and then you wake up and you feel stoned like that. A lot of people are like, yeah, man, it happened to me. Holy it's shit. It's never happened to me. It fades away because you you start convincing yourself. Oh, it was a dream. I realized yeah. that. It, but it's like, I even sat down once and like, I remember I was like trying to quit smoking weed and I found this, this YouTube video and the guy was talking about hypnosis and he goes, he goes, try this out. Like walk yourself through the steps of what you do. Like, th like smell the weed, bit it out, put it in the paper, like even move your hands if you have to, or just close your eyes and visualize it but do it with incredible detail and then smoke like in your mind, like do it or, or wow. again with the actions or whatever. I remember for a while I had a pen and I would, and I would pull on it and I would start kind of feeling a buzz and I'm, and I just kind of had these realizations, like all these little things You're going in my through life. the entire thing minus the actual thing. Exactly. It's really so interesting. So the lungs are fine. I'm not like bombing my brain with <laughs> fucking THC and, and it might CBD influence and a whole breed of people that just smoke pens though. <laughs> Well, I'm sure it's really gross, actually. But like, visualize for ten minutes, and then they just take tokes off their pen. But what's cool is kind of like, like you know, when you like teach a dog to like shit outside, and you like, you like have like, the, let's say they shit on, they, they piss on the couch all the time. So like, you you bring like a pillow from the couch outside, and then you like take the pillow away or something. Like, there's yeah. tricks like that. Like, eventually, why don't you just get high? Why don't you just be high? Like the, that guy Sadhguru, like like the yeah. the the real like kind of popular t uh, yoga teacher yoga master or whatever in india right now he's like he always talks about that he goes he goes learn learn my ways and you're gonna be you're gonna be blissed out all the time <laughs> he goes look at my eyes i'm high <laughs> all the fucking time you yeah. know he doesn't touch anything he doesn't touch he's just high on air but he's like i'm fucking i'm gone man <laughs> like i'm just gone all the time but but if i need to be i'm focused in hmm. if you smoke something you're on a you're on a roller coaster ride yeah. It's, it's done when it's done you're you're locked in you yeah. know so so he that's it's interesting let's circle all the way back to bob lazar for a second Do um, it. and then that'll segue into the military and we can talk about dakota again oh yes <laughs> but before dakota i want to bring up also the that podcast from last week oh yeah i forgot yeah, yeah. but um so bob lazar um what's fucking fascinating and now is that i think james corbell is the name of the guy who made the documentary anyway he, Bob Lazar at the time said they had special scanning machines that scanned your hand bones. Like you put your hand on this thing and it scans your bone size. So that's like the most accurate way to verify your identification. And at the time, everyone was like, this is ridiculous. Like what, what the fuck is he talking about? Mm. And then like recently, like a few years back, they just showed this technology that they had like in some declassified files. It's like we had bone scanners. So it's like there's so many things that he said that are actually being confirmed now. Mm. It's a really simple technology too, if you think about it. Like you just shine a light through your hand and like yeah. see the bone, 
like to, to a certain measurement like a measurability and then it's like it's unique to everybody or the proportions maybe are unique to everybody something like that and um so james corbell is saying i think that's his name whatever um maybe that I find it he's saying that future people are going to start coming out in the in the later documentaries that are people that worked at s4 that could verify bob lazar saying that they remember seeing him coming in daily and saying hi to him which is a mind fuck and also in that documentary he gave a tour of one of the facilities that he claimed to have worked at but there's no record and like he knew the receptionist he knew his way around the entire fucking facility and they're all like, who's this guy? Like, they're all pretending that he's never worked there or something. <laughs> but he, like, made a left. He's like, this is this hallway, blah, blah, blah. And he went through the whole place. Like, he's just clearly been there before. He's clearly yeah. been there before. He knew exactly where to go in there. It's, uh, what, what was the thing also where they claimed, like, he didn't go to a certain school, but that was, like, really easy for him to prove? Like, yes. that's where they kind of fucked They kind of wiped his whole past out. But yeah, there's, vi- there's, l- there's verifications. He had yearbook photos and stuff. Like, it's... I'm trying to find this guy's name. James Corbell or... G- Check like one of the recent uh, JRE podcasts because then you can find the the captain's name too. Oh, that's true. I should have done that. I just want to find the dude who made it. It's like... Because last week there was a really interesting podcast about that fighter pilot who... Jeremy... Jeremy Corbell. Corbell, yeah. Yeah. What was the name of the captain? They were on the podcast last week. Captain, uh, fuck, I can't remember his name either. I'll find that one faster. So basically, uh, that guy chased the UFO. like, And uh, from what his account was, it was like the way it navigated in the sky was unimaginable. David Fravor? Fravor? Is that the one? With Jamie, with uh, with Corbell there? With Jeremy Corbell? Oh, yeah, Corbell's there too. Yeah, they both were on. Yeah, that's the one. Okay, there you go. Oh, the Tic Tac and all that. Yes. Yeah, yeah. I heard and this is like Pentagon, Pentagon verified footage. Like David it's not a joke. Fravor. Fravor. And he was talking about it. He's like, like, as normal as you and me, not into UFOs or anything. And then he sees this and his whole team see it. And it's like this thing was fucking with their radars. It was making right angles at very fast speeds in mm-hmm. the sky. And it blimped in and out of space. It's like, like at will kind of. And there was no explanation for it. You remember the movie Signs? I've never seen it. Oh, it's actually a really cool movie. I mean, it's M. Night Shyamalan, you know, like, you know, buyer beware. But I liked it. But uh, they used actual footage in the movie. I'm pretty sure. uh, Maybe I'm making this up. But there's like some UFO sightings, you know, and it's like, like there's something, there's like a kind of like invisible thing in the sky. It's kind of like warping light. And then, like, like there, there's these things there, and they were clear as day, and everyone saw them. Like, a city saw these things. A city of people, like you were saying. Like, you just can't hide that. A group of people are like, we saw that. But then they suddenly they're gone, but they're still there. So then there's, like, people, there's, like, there's like helicopters and shit, like, surrounding it and making sure. And then, like, you see, like, a bird, like, fly into it and just, like, hit nothing and fall. <laughs> and, like, crazy shit. And this is real. Whoa. And there's, like, 20 million fucking stories of shit like that. There's all these yeah. crazy videos of these, like these weird like tetrahedron pyramid uh you know uh merkaba shaped whatever it's it's always like the, this kind of geometric something and and it's crazy to see like sometimes you see like some spiral and you're like okay maybe that's a projector maybe it's a trick of the camera yeah. there's you, you don't know it's annoying because there's no clear footage if you look at all these videos it's all shaky camera yeah, yeah, there's a few though. That's what's crazy, man. You don't have to look that hard. There's a few really crazy moments. There's yeah. even there's even this one thing I saw a while back where um this guy's just doing like a normal news segment on on some fucking daytime nonsense. And this guy just claims that he can like conjure UFOs, like the way the Greer guy was talking about. And it's there's a pattern there. It's like you can you can like meditate or something and kind of call on them or something. I don't fucking know. So this guy just starts talking like biblically, like really talking about like Jesus and stuff. He's like praying. He's like calling. He's like, and you know, he's just like looking up to the sky and it's broad daylight. Okay, like fucking sun shining, and you see a star. Like you see this thing come above them and start moving around weird and then fly away. And it's like, what the f was that? I'm skeptical. <laughs> For sure, me too. Yeah. But like the. I don't know, like, was the was the news guy in on it? Or was he just like, this is going to be a hoax, this is going to be funny, it's a slow news day, yeah. let's see what happens, and then there's something actually in the sky. 
You know, like I, I don't know. It's fun to think about, but Certainly when you is. see a guy like that, that, that captain there on the podcast who has a verified footage, mm. and it's like it's not a joke anymore. It's like no, this is the Pentagon passed this. This is out now. This is a minute footage of what happened, mm -hmm. and it's it's infrared. It's not clear. It's not a 4K HD camera, but it's all the math is there it was on the radar the speeds were all there mm -hmm. how it blimped in and out of space where it's not unheard of like that's that's mind blowing when someone like at that caliber is coming out and he's a, a down to earth dude he would say that he him and the team would know where people are fucking around camping out to see UFOs and they would hover near them without their lights on and then just turn the lights on and turn it off and just fly out and <laughs> they like, were Hello. deliberately fucking with people because it was hilarious that's funny so like he has a sense of humility to himself he's like yeah we used to fuck around with people and make fake UFO sightings all the time <laughs> you know but then this happened and he's like shit there's something uh, real happening it's unexplainable and yeah. it's really it's a good podcast to listen to man to see uh, a guy with that with those titles coming out and speaking about it you know it's funny to think like there's so many like my brain is just cracking off you know like this guy's faking ufo sightings and then ufos come which is like weird and suspicious but also like maybe the ufos are just like oh yeah <laughs> you know like no one's gonna believe you now let's see how you feel motherfucker like just just to go like that or it's the fact that they have the technology to inevitably observe something that they're performing so then they just go okay we're smart enough to know that they're gonna know that we're here so we're just gonna kind of present ourselves and you know their technology is so advanced or whatever that they're it doesn't they don't care they're like yeah. you can't touch me you can't do anything like i'm just gonna like we've decided to uh reveal ourselves and it's also like there's this kind of like it's a big universe argument where it's like or a big a big multiverse a big uh you know it's like these aren't necessarily even extraterrestrial they might be extra dimensional like you said but it's like they have their own uh free will in a sense you know like like maybe there's a bunch of people who don't see the value or even they see the danger of communicating with us. And then a, then another group are just like, nah, I'm going to see what's up. I'm going to yeah. go say hi. You know, and it's like, no. <laughs> Everyone else is like, don't do it. It's kind of like uh, the DMT experience. It's I thought like, you were going to say the Anunnaki. Uh oh. Because, like, they were told not to. That's, uh, that's it's a, a nice fun rabbit story. hole to go into. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, let's not. Let's not. In another podcast. Yeah. Uh, but that's that's the DMT realms. And, like, when as soon as I smoked DMT, I my obsession or my my curiosity to UFOs, it was ended at that day. She's like, yeah, okay. And it's like it's funny because Joe Rogan would say that too. It's like DMT is aliens times a million. Oh, no, it's like, what did he say? It was uh, aliens time in, times a million or something plus infinity or something. <laughs> something ridiculous. If you get into the conspiracy of it too, I like the idea that like um, this could this could be like the next level of distraction. You know, there could be this introduction to something that kind of re-solidifies the scientific materialist kind of like religion, like the, the, the ideology that we are kind of suffering because it's like, yeah, there is something else. Uh, and like, and it, it'll, it'll kind of recategorize all the new age stuff into the science, but it's like, oh, they're just, they're just aliens. And it's like all the stuff that we thought was, was this and that is actually just advanced technology. And it just kind of, anyone who had a doubt or was like kind of moving into a more spiritual space again get shoved into this kind of cold metallic reality because it's like yes there is more but it's more of what we were saying mm. and and it's just this kind of trick it's just this kind of push into uh, like a false um, more of the false reality more of like the well, the material uh, yeah it's not extra dimensional it's not yeah. it's not something it's something you can wrap your head around even though it's amazing and extravagant it's just another planet. It's just yeah. crazy technology. And, they, and they, maybe they're going to share a technology. Maybe this, maybe that. Maybe they're just going to say hi and bye, and then we're going to forget about it in fucking 50 years because we're we're just a weird bunch of monkeys. Yeah. But and that's... Then, that's then I, experiences yeah. like DMT where people literally get in contact with beings and and entities and stuff. It's like, that's, that's a no-no. We can't think about that kind of story. The raw material, uh, Paul Selig. Um, I can't remember the other guy who says um all the time. I think it was funny. He's like a he has a connection. Bashar, huh? Bashar or whatever his name is. I maybe. Yeah, he's, he's like, like an older bald dude. dude. Yeah, I think he had like some gray hair or something. Yeah. I don't know if he was bald, but he but he Bashar would, is another one. He apparently he's channeling something, and he what he says is pretty profound. But I can't take him serious. It's hard to listen to him. Yeah, there's a few that are weird. The one I'm talking about, it's funny. Like like it's amazing that it's so articulate, 
and the way he speaks, it seems so hard to like keep a thought going, hmm. but he doesn't stop speaking for a second. Okay. And, and he, but he says, um, <laughs> he goes, he's like between every few words, he goes, um, and then, um, 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 nuts. Yeah, I know. I hated it. But like the Paul Selig one's pretty weird too, but he's just so articulate. It's so beautiful what he says. I'm, I'm like halfway through his first book and I'm like, fuck, there's like seven books. And, and I really respect Aubrey Marcus and his journey. So for him to say like these books have a sequence, there's a there's a there's a power to them, there's a there's a logic to them. As I'm reading the first one, I'm like, this is good stuff, and I see that there's a lot of kind of preamble because you got to break a lot of paradigms and stuff. But I could see it just kind of rambling forever. What's, what's this book called? The first one's called I Am the Word. Okay. And there's a lot of powerful shit there that I that I still use to this day. Wow. But because like I started reading it a while ago and I kind of put it down. I'm very resistant, man. I'm very skeptical. It's fun to explore this stuff, but in the end, I'm just talking. Mm. You know, when I, when you put it into practice. I mean, Paul Selig is talking about how the book is like essentially you inviting the guides or whatever the whatever is you know talking through him to work on you in a way that's not even fully conscious. You know, so it's well, like you get to you read this book and it integrates into you in a way that that isn't like super up to you. You know, you're just saying yes in a sense. Dude, you still, you still have a choice. I would, to, I would totally turn off what you're saying right now and be like, "Fuck off, that's bullshit." But after my ayahuasca experience, like this is resonating with me because I saw. I don't know if I told you this. I saw my my life in like laid out in like, I guess from a different dimension where time is not linear, where you can pick moments of your life at will, okay, like a, yeah. like a frame. You know, I don't, I don't know if you told me that. And. There's been moments in my life where if I've had like five seconds before an event would happen, I would be like, brace yourself. This is like something. And then something would happen. Like it's literally, I can count on my hand how many times it's happened. And it was with my ex too, the, my recent ex. I had dreams almost every night, like warning dreams. Mm. And one dream I had was like, uh, I was in my old house. I think I told you this dream. And I was staring out the window and I saw her getting out of the, my house. This is my old house too. And when, so the dream took place in my old house where I grew up in. And I'm still so hard to describe dreams. <laughs> yeah, it's like the <laughs> setting's constantly dynamically changing. And yeah. it's like kind of my old house, but also something else, yeah. you know. But I guess the old house is a sense of child familiarity of my childhood. So that's what I took out. And I was watching from the window her run into a van. And I'm watching the van, and right next, then I started noticing there's an old man next to me. I'm looking at him, and he's dead face staring, but no reaction. And I'm like this kid, like, what is she doing? What is she doing? And I'm looking at him, and he's just staring, present, observing, but zero reaction. And then the you did tell me this, yeah. And then that. like the the van was moving like in GTA when they're having sex in the van, you know, and, like the van starts wobbling. <laughs> the van, the van was a rocking. Yeah, it was rocking. I'm like, I'm like crying, I'm like, what the fuck? She's fucking having sex with some dude in the car. And then I'm looking, I'm like, do you see that? And he's just staring. He's like he's emotionless he's just i'm there watching this is reality you're the kid freaking out i'm just watching and she comes in and we have a huge fight and he's there in the corner watching us and i'm looking at him and i'm like what the fuck is he like this wisdom he has and then i got out of it was when i woke up it was like fuck the the childish self was the ego trying to figure everything out and panicking anxiety stress and then the observer is just like my higher self just observing whatever's happening and not attaching emotion to everything so fast forward to the ayahuasca experience um the higher so i remember you saying it was kind of like an older version of you or something like the wiser version of myself the yeah, higher yeah, yeah. my higher consciousness my if you look at yourself as like you map out through all the dimensions he's like the guy at the top just watching everything happen below yeah and so i i kid you not man and this is my ayahuasca experience i i met him mm. like he was he was pointing out the frames of of my life. Where he's like, I was here, right? Remember when you looked up and you were thinking about me? I was right there. Remember that dream? I was right there. Remember this? I was right there. And he was just fucking pointing them all. And I'm crying at this point, like hysterically. I'm like, you were fucking right there, man. This whole fucking time, I knew you were there. I fucking knew you were. There. I was telling him, and he's like, just keep going through the process. I can't change it for you, but I can I can poke in every now and then. But just fucking trust the process. Just like a thumbs up or like a green. Yeah, flag it's just like you just got to keep going and just trust that there's a path that you're not lost or trust that this path has a conclusion. And I'm literally just. I can't change your free will. I cannot influence you, but I can poke in every few minutes. Just, just give you that's a nudge, so beautiful, bro. And that's I'm, I'm so like, 
waiting for that. I wish I had some kind of direct. It was, uh, I've never, like, if you told me all this, like, a month before the ceremony, but yeah, okay. Let me ask you something, though, because uh, yesterday I realized, it's it's weird, it's like I was, like, half in a dream, like, I woke up and I had a, I had this, like, weird kind of, like, not a nightmare, but, like, a stressful dream, but, um, and then I had this memory from the ceremony, and, and I was like, holy shit, I kind of, like, totally forgot about that. And I mean, I could talk, I can get into it in detail, but, um, like, did you, did you kind of come out of the ceremony and like you, like that was just clear or it was like a couple days, weeks later, you're like, oh shit, I talked to my higher self or whatever. Like, no, it was very clear during ceremony. It was okay. It was just like a conversation. Like it was just, yeah, this happened. It was very, very direct. I yeah. guess I'm, I guess I'm really like trying to get ahead of myself all the time so then like once i got out of there i was like relieved almost and i was like okay i'm like i'm like finding my my roots again but then there was moments after ceremony that like come into my life and it's like i chuckle because i know he's there like it sounds stupid but i know like that i'm being guided by my higher self and it's like as stupid as this is like i had a car accident with my other car i totaled it no injuries whatever i'm just driving the car and I was literally going in a straight line. I'm like, I like this car. It's too bad. I'm probably going to get into an accident. Bang. <laughs> and then three seconds later, boof. Like, <laughs> I wasn't even upset when I got out of the car. I'm like, yo, dude, you good? You good? I'm like, good. And I was laughing to myself. <laughs> I'm like, fucking, this has got to be like a little nudge. Like, this is going to happen. Kind That's of too funny. And then it happened with Lily the, uh, two weeks ago, my dog. Um, I'm like, I was playing with her. The, I was throwing she got into a car accident. <laughs> <laughs> Shit, then. That's going to be a hard one to laugh off. <laughs> no, no, I, I was joking. Like, yeah, no, like no. she's in the car driving. Like, I didn't even think about it that way. <laughs> we, were, we, were playing, we were playing ball. Like, I was playing catch, just like working her leg because she had surgery. Mm -hmm. So I'm just strengthening her leg now. It's been about three months. And I throw the ball and I'm like, fuck, I need to book the appointment with the vet. Like, I just want to make sure her leg's okay. Because mm. like, I, I'm like worried that may, it might just like seize up or something. And I throw the ball and then she fucking falls over and starts limping and I'm panicking. I'm like, what the fuck? Oh, fuck. I just run to her. And then it was just because of muscle spasms. Like, I thought she ripped her knee again. But it was just muscle spasms and it relaxed. But like, there was like a moment right before I just like nudged myself again. I'm like, yeah. and it's kind of like, yeah, get her to the fucking vet. But it's like I'm noticing in my timeline that like there's like a level of intuition that happens like right before an event and I'm just just tapping into that voice. And like maybe that could eventually expand to like an hour before an event and then I'll avoid the event or something. I don't know. Or maybe I won't. And maybe it's just because I think if that happens, intervening with free will, I guess. Maybe you can't even. Who knows? Yeah. I don't know. Maybe. But I think the point is that you're not fully aware. You're just like something kind of just comes in like you're you're a little more open or a little more receptive or something or a lot more, I guess. And you're, and you're, you're like, you catch a whiff, you know, you just like, and, and it, and to you, it's just a, th a passing thought, but then there's the, like the, the, what, like the, you know, the kismet, like the serendipity, whatever, like that word, like the coincidence, like you're like it, 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 it hits because you go, Oh shit, I was just thinking the thing. And then that happened. Yeah. And, and now also as time passes, you're seeing a pattern, like a bigger pattern. Yeah. And, and it's, it's funny, like you're describing it exactly like they described it in Star Trek of all things. There's this <laughs> there's this character named Guinan. Okay. And she's like super old. She's like hundreds of years old. And she went into this space that's like like heaven, essentially. It's like in one of the movies. I don't know. Like I won't get into detail. But she, she talks about meeting her higher self. And it's like it's like she no she realized like that she's only one of like an infinite number of herself that is like going through this one timeline and and she has no like true free will in her perspective but her higher self is controlling all of these these selves like these like 3d like individuals because to you you have this one timeline going on but in mm. the higher realm like they're all happening all simultaneously happening. and they're almost every like, outcome yeah it's like imagine you're like a cell in the body but it's fractal it's like a high, it's like literally like you but like a super you I don't fucking know, but it was cool. It's cool that they bring that shit up in something wow. like Star Trek. It's um, amazing. But yeah, that's that's exactly kind of how I experienced it. It was like direct communication with whoever that was. I, the only way I can describe him was my higher self, was just my absolute, fully conscious, aware self, not funneled through the ego. And this experience, it was like stripped away from everything, and that's who I was. Like and looking at a... It's like you're in the movie 
and this thing is like looking at a poster made of all the frames or something. Yes. And you, to, from your perspective, it, I'm just playing the it scene. can't intervene. And yeah. from its perspective, you have no free will. It's, yeah. cr- it's amazing. Yeah, it's, he's seeing the whole... And then it started getting into math. Like uh, This is a weird part of this experience. It's like everything has a mathematical formula and equation and it all sums up. And it's like whatever your choice did, it's just a different... It's just the equation going in a different angle, but it's all mapped out from birth. And it's like, that's what he's seeing. He's seeing like the matrix code of my life. And it just, it is what it is. Because it's, like, it's like karma in a sense. Yeah. You have like a kind of limited, you know, in science they call in well, in science, that's kind of a dumb thing to say, but like in physics, they call it a light cone. There's like this, I, I, I won't get into it. Like just Google, like maybe we can talk about it after, but okay. it's kind of like this, this path that your life can take and it can't get out of that. Like, like because of the speed of light, you can't escape this like light mm. cone. And the light, con- like the, your 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 world line, like your 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 life path, is is somewhere in there, but it can't get out of there. It just, it's impossible to get out of there. But there's there's infinite possibilities within that, and then there could be other light cones or something, and then like who knows? But it's yeah. it's a fun thing to get Whoa. into, like because science gets into it. I'm sure like Vsauce or something gets into it. Also, this it's fascinating. That is fascinating. It's one of those t- moments where like philosophy and and hard science merge, and you're like whoa. Wow. Yeah, I love it. That's so cool. I'll I'll try to find like a good video for you and share it. So maybe that's it, man. It's like that higher self is observing the light cone <laughs> just like as a whole and just seeing every possible outcome and just I guess poking in when he can to just kind of keep you steering on whatever you're doing. And that's that's the most it can do, but each experience is doing their own free will and own choices or the illusion of free will from his perspective, but for us it feels like you're you're leading your way. Dude, you'd love the raw material. You got to read that. The it's what material? The raw material, like R A, like the sun god from from like Egypt uh, mythology. Yeah. Like it's called it's called the book of the law of one, and like colon the raw material or something like that. Maybe it's the other way around, but it's like they like imagine these academics, like who are are formulate formulating like really good questions, but and they're interviewing an eighth dimensional being who is like, you know, like just. Not, just not even human like just not even close to our experience and trying to explain how like to 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 Ra, it's like i'm i know i'm of god i'm i'm like i could t- I, i'm like so close to god it's so obvious to me that i'm of god but you guys are so far away and it's part of the game it's like you're you're supposed to be like kind of trapped in this weird thing and like and like have fun like in in there you know and the way that he the way the, the it's it's a long book you know and it's and then there's there's like chapters and chapters and it's just an interview it's just like a back and forth a cool. dialogue it's fascinating i want to read that even just as a fiction yeah like even if you just want to read it like you don't like you know i like like i've, I've been saying throughout this whole thing i'm really skeptical but i'm like a hundred percent skeptical it's a problem mm. <laughs> i don't believe anything i just i don't believe we're in this room right now it's kind of yeah. like a dislocating sometimes but <laughs> I, I don't believe I'm not a skeptic and I just and I just like I just break things down for fun like I still see logic and patterns and I and I try to admit things or see what's practical or whatever or you know I or just not really commit to anything that I that I think might be true but it, mm. it doesn't mean that I just stick to what like the majority believes either I yeah. like I just I just look at what's in front of me and I and I go okay like and I, some of it can even be just embarrassing it's simple like that sometimes you know but but uh, seriously that book like anyone who's listening just fucking like go google it there's a web page actually i think it's just called the like rawmaterial.com or something and i can order it on amazon most probably yeah i don't know if there's even like i'm sure there's like a solid but i hope there is just like okay. a solid book but you can go online and read everything i'm still reading the power myth by joseph campbell i i've been nice. delaying it man i don't know why but he he gets into it it just like all the mythology and what it means and the moral compass that it invo- that it has for us and the similarities in different stories and it's like bringing back myth and that's what's missing in our times is is the lack oh, of myth i feel it man I, I was talking to a friend of mine and he suggested like we were talking about like kind of my depression and my 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 feeling of like just not being useful lately and he says like um well, it, it it was also the like a writing tool. It was also like I wanted to write. Anyway, this, the details aren't important. But he says, go on YouTube, and type in stories of old, and there's this little archetype like playlist that this guy talks about, 
and the, the videos are very well done. I recommend them as well. He talks about this book called, I think it was called like Warrior, King, Magician, Lover or something like that. I'm, I'm sure I'm mixing up those four, but hmm. it was, those videos were so powerful. I watched them once and I, I was like, I was like, I should watch these every morning just to like wake myself up sort of like, because they were so powerful and so enlightening. It wasn't just, it was like a mix of a lot of context a lot of understanding, a lot of self-understanding, just human understanding, and and like a sprinkle of like motivation, hmm. you know? Like it wasn't just this motivational nonsense. It was like, this is what you're experiencing. This is the human endeavor, and, and this is why you have a, a, a pull, a draw to so many of these powerful stories. And you see the archetypes at play. He, he uses so many examples like Lord of the Rings and stuff like that. It's the human experience mapped out in a story. You know, it's like yeah. you have to, you rise, you grow, and then you have to kind of kill your old self to become this new flourishing self. It's the it's the path of the hero. It's like at some point you're going to have to die. And it's not a physical death. It's an egoic death. And then when you're in that dark world, in the dark underworld, they call it, is that's where you have to f guide yourself out of it because no one can pull you out of the underworld. You have to fight through it. And then when you resurrect... You're this new being, but you're still you, but with this new insight and new confidence, and that's the continuation of the hero's journey. Yeah, it's, it's almost like, like you have to, it's like you get to a point where you have to start doing it consciously. You know, like you're, you don't notice the deaths as they pass through and, you, and you're just like learning a skill or like you're getting over a... a a, a death of uh, I don't know something something's changing in your life something hard yeah. but then eventually you're just sitting there and you need to make the change and it's uncomfortable and you you just have like a piece of you needs to die yeah and it feels like that it feels even worse maybe like I don't know what death feels like but it's like you you have to walk off the ledge as if you're bungee jumping like yeah. I went skydiving once and I just closed my eyes and I fell and I and I just like I chickened I chickened out but I chickened in like I just I mm. still wanted to do it I was up there I was at the door I was like, I wanted to fall through the clouds, you know, like nice. I wanted to do it, but I was terrified. My legs turned to fucking jelly. Yeah. And then everyone I tell that story to, they go, you will shit your pants if you go bungee jumping because it's just more real. You're, you got to walk the fuck off that ledge. Nice. There's people who swan dive, like they're fucking balls. I would, swan dive. I would try it, man. I, I think would I would just cannonball off that fucking thing. <laughs> <laughs> but it's like, you see the ground. Yeah. You see, you're on the ledge. Like there's just something a little more real about it. And yeah, it's, it's. Like maybe it's maybe way safer, but it, but for some reason way scarier. For that reason, it reminds way me of Mexico, man. We were doing cave, like we went on this like uh, cave ex exploration, and there was like a cave where you can jump in the cave from a ledge, and there's like two, three levels. Like the each level had like its own color. I think like a yellow line. Oh, no, they all had yellow lines, and the yellow line is like once you pass the yellow line, you jump. It's like there's <laughs> the cliff, and I always go to the top maximum. You know, that's just my fucked up head. And I remember, I, <laughs> I remember at the top, I'm like, oh fuck, there's what is this feeling of hesitation? And I look at the yellow line, I'm like, there's a yellow line in life. You fucking cross that yellow line wherever you can. I just dove, but there's that moment I I resonate. It's like that feeling of like, oh, this is real. Like if I jump too much, I can hit the ledge or something. But the ground is right. I'm gonna hit the ground, which in that case was water. But I'm gonna hit something in the surface. And there's like, there's a mini death there. It's you have to kill that cowardly self and fucking gain bravery out of it it's it's like you could die yeah like you kind of have to admit like whatever whatever moment in life whatever thing you're doing there's just this sudden remembrance when you're when you're actively changing yourself you realize oh life is change i am gonna die if you, you don't want to look at that you know yeah. and then and if you get used to like steve-o he goes three two one and he, and he <laughs> says i have to do it after yeah. that's like you know, I mean, I don't know if I don't know if I'd call him a role model, you know, but look at his life. <laughs> yeah. Look at his life. He's had an amazing experience. He's an amazing human being. Yeah. He's got a lot of wisdom. He's got a lot of fucking concussions and shit too, and injuries <laughs> and like a an and arrests and shit. You yeah. know, like you don't have to emulate, but but that there's some wisdom to that. You're you know you're gonna be scared. You might even be scared, but you turn it off. And in some weird way, you just go, I'm here now and the fear isn't serving me. And you just three, two, one, and you jump. And you face your mortality. Yeah, Boom. because you're going to fucking die. Cross that fucking <laughs> yellow line and go for it, man. And it's what's holding you back is what's really killing you. Yeah, man. It's it's cheesy. A lot of people say it, but like people die before they die kind of thing. Yeah. You know, and It's and very it, cheesy, but it's fucking true. And it's only cheesy because it's being overused in the wrong context and stuff. 
but the essence of it is fucking true. There's like a work harder twist to everything because of the oh that's the that's the buzzer, yeah. but but yeah man we're, we're we're it's something worth meditating on. It's why I really respect the samurai because they sit there and they they practice so much they have that discipline and they picture themselves dying, eaten by dogs, ripped apart by arrows, stabbed by by an enemy. There's something in the book where they say if you get decapitated, you still have moments where you can kill your enemy. Even with your fucking head cut off, keep fucking going. It's great, but that's because of resolve. That's because when you're not in it, you think about it. Hmm. And then when you get there, you're like, you're You've not less there. scared. You're yeah. just like, oh, yeah, I knew I was going to be scared. Yeah. And and you, you know, you fucking do what you got to do because we're going in the dirt anyway. Yes. I don't know, man. I could talk forever. I don't want to. That was beautiful, brother. And on that note, episode number nine, sign out. Fucking... Stay curious. <laughs> yeah, man. Have strength. Have humility. And have a good time, fuck. Have fun. Exactly. <laughs> have a fucking good time at the end of the day. It's such or a short fucking journey, and we don't even realize how short it is. But it it, don't, it speeds up. It does speed up. So so just, you know, slow it down. <laughs> just rock out with your cock out, brother. <laughs> Let's talk more walk. <laughs> All right, bro.